Good evening, welcome back. I'm Shane from Direct Bird Products, uh, part of the Evans and Pontins team. Um, well, this week is going to be about bullfinches. Uh, what I'm going to do is compare the Sibs Northern, obviously they're the same ones, to the British, obviously native ones, um, and just explain a couple of things about them. And luckily this week we've had um, Mark's done me um, a short video uh, to show and explain some of the, the reasons that he does the way he does. Uh, also a contribution from Dean Walton, um, he's, he's a keen breeder um, from my old neck of the woods, South Yorkshire, um, on some of the um, northern Siberian bullfinches that he's breeding this year. So it's good to, to um, involve everybody, so uh, this is what we're here for, to, to try and involve people and give something back, for instance. Um, I've had so many messages from people uh, saying, you know, that they've been breeding birds for years and some of the little tips that they're picking up um, are, you know, really encouraging for them. So th this is what we're all about, to try and help each other. and. And if we can, you know, just pass one tip on to the next person, I think we'd, we'd get far. And one main thing is to, to try and bring some uh, some younger people into it. And Oliver Crawford's doing a fantastic job with his channel um, through Facebook. Uh, we've obviously his, his site. And one thing I would want to mention, I'm involved in um, a couple of uh, Facebook groups. Um, I work closely with them, one being the UK um, show scene and sales uh, Facebook group and also the the Irish um, or, no the native Finch um, Mule and Hybrid Club uh, work closely with all them and the, the admin team on there are brilliant uh, check that out I'll put the link in the description and check it out And but obviously we don't want to have people that don't breed birds in there posting spam so you, you do have to answer a couple of questions before we will allow you in. It's just for common sense. We don't, us bird people don't want to be looking at um, rubbish that people post in there, selling obviously stuff that's not related to birds, um, you know, promoting the business and stuff. That's not what this group's about. But yeah, this week, really eventful week in the shed. Um, as you guys know, keeping birds, breeding birds is not um, something you can do a click of a finger. It, it's a full time job in itself whether it be cleaning out, uh, just maintaining the birds. Obviously, you're going to get, uh, the more you put into the birds, the more you're going to get back out of them. That doesn't mean to say that you have to spend a fortune on the, the best products for this and the best products for that. Just just be wise and use your brain a little. It's, it's not rocket science and it, it is. I mean, when I've been looking around some of mine, I've, I've picked some fives out this week for breeding because obviously, you know, we, we keep fives as well, which we inherited, but that'll be a totally different video. Um, and just, just some of the finer points, and I've been having a bit of advice of my health, quite critical, Matt is, um, of, of some of the birds, which is, is really good, really good advice he gives out. So um, we are looking forward to actually having him uh, come and visit us when we're allowed and, and do a part on, on certain birds. But anyway, that's a different story <coughs> today. It's going to be about bullfinches, but before we get into that, um, just a couple of questions, a couple of points that I just want to make. Um, we had um, quite a few messages, and thanks for your messages and comments, uh, especially Alan. Alan's been um, watching all our videos, and he's got a lovely uh, and green finch on his profile picture. I wouldn't mind that in my stock, put it that way. Lovely bird, um, and thanks for watching, Alan. Um, it, it means a lot when you guys watch, so if you haven't already, subscribe, like if you like the videos. If you don't like them, don't leave the thumbs down like some people are doing. Just just message, explain what you don't like about it, and we're here to help people, not to cause controversy, so that's that. Uh, Benefico, again, hello mate, you, I hope you're good. Lighting, um, lighting is uh, a bit of a... A subject where you love it or hate it. Technically, I mean, I've got lights here. I've got four strip lights. Um, I've also got a dimmer system, which I haven't actually installed yet um, since putting the, the cladding back up. Um, 
it is on the list to do, but obviously we're having air conditioning fitted in here shortly. So the wiring be moved around, so that's the reason that's not done. But yeah, we, we have lighting. Technically, I don't need it. Um, I've got plenty of light coming in from the windows. Um, so we don't need it. It's just for my benefit, especially when I'm recording. I do need light on, or everything will be a bit duller. So uh, lighting time-wise, um, I like to just be a bit of a jump in, in, in front of, obviously, natural light. Natural light um, at the minute is... I would say between 10 and 11 hours. Mine is about 12 hours at the moment. Um, optimal time through breeding season, 14 hours, if not longer. Um, I have, like I said, my all lights are set with a timer, so they do come on about seven in the morning. They go off seven, 7.15. They are, I am increasing in increments of 15 minutes leading up to breeding season. Um, same with the dimmer system, that's switched, so it comes on 15 minutes before the lights go off and it lasts a 30 minute period where it dims slowly on its own. Um, that is from Sunrise Agriculture, if anyone wants to know. Les at Sunrise, um, I've used Les for years, ever since I lived up uh, in South Yorkshire. Um, and his, his shop, I think, is still in Bramley. If not, look it up on, online, uh, Superior Pets and Sunrise Agriculture. Les is fantastic, he does offer a wide range of bird products like ourselves. Uh, but lighting, that's, that's where you want to go. Um, but so far as lighting, I just want to touch on one point. Uh, and it's a question that I keep getting asked, is conditioning birds. Yep, you've got your conditioning seeds, you've got your egg foods and soap seeds that are going to, going to help to condition. But the best form of conditioning is natural light. You can't go wrong with natural light, and, and you'll see the birds in the wild. This time of year, I mean, <coughs> in London, we're, we're getting on average five or six minutes more than what we do up north light, and obviously the temperatures down here are warmer than what they are up north. Yesterday, 13, 14 degrees. So obviously our birds are going to come into condition faster than what yours will. But light, 100%, that, that's your conditioner. Um, there's no two ways about it. It's, it's actually, if you've got your light right, your birds are going to come into condition. Simple as that. Best form of conditioning that there is. Light. As much natural light as possible. That's that. Simple. So, one other thing I just want to quickly let you know. Obviously, my birds, um, you've seen me in previous videos giving form, calcium, vitamins and stuff like that. Um, I was asked about worming birds, yes. Um, wormer, this is form Expel that I've used previously. We sell this, um, plenty available. But now we, we've gone on to S76. Uh, we also supply and sell. S76, there's a lot of research going into it. And it's one thing I'm trying, I've, I tried it later on last year, I'm trying it again this year. Um, and it, it's an all-in-one, it, it air sac might, wormer, all this type of stuff it does. So, obviously, this has gone out the window this year, but I do swear by Expel. Um, I've actually got my previous bottle here almost empty. So that just shows how much I do use it, obviously, for coming up for breeding season. And we sell, obviously, a 76. Um, we we sell it in 100ml bottles. It's, it's just that we, we buy it. In litres of it um, just to pass on the actual cost cutting to you because if you were to buy uh, I think it's like is it 50 mil 23 24 pound 100 mil is something like 30 or 40 pounds and we sell 100 mil of it for 20 pounds so obviously we're not doing it to undercut everybody we're doing it to try and save you guys money um, nothing else it's not about making thousands of pounds off a product that we don't believe in. I mean, the guys that do you, you do swear by it. So obviously it's up to you to try and decide yourself. Now, the next thing I was sent this by Nelson Rato or Rato, he's on Facebook. Um, he has supplied quite a few of the lads uh, in Dublin and obviously Avian World, I think it is in Dublin. Um, I've got one of these, Mark's got two and 
obviously the design on this is, is one I chose a uh, picture of me and Mark on the front direct bird products but obviously I'd not seen it before but when I opened it up the actual record side of it is fantastic um, as you can see that these eight pound I think it's 25 pages I think said so that there seems to be a lot more than 25 pages in there but I mean the description of these you've got obviously for your first second third round you cock your ends there's, there's so much on here that is right cage number uh, in comparison to my last year's one this is a generic one um, an old school one generic one nothing wrong with this uh, but this one for me is absolutely fantastic and he's done a brilliant job for eight pound delivered to your door I don't think you can ask for any better than that and obviously if you need more pages in let him know he'll do it I mean if you do want his um, details send me a message and I'll forward it on to you because for eight pound for that get your picture on the front or your, your picture of your bird that you require you can't go wrong for eight pound now before we go on to obviously showing you um, the bullfinches like I said previously I've got a pair of um, Siberian northern ones and a pair of British native bullfinches uh, both pairs are stunning pairs um, I actually do think that the male bullfinch is one of the best looking uh, British birds that there actually is in the wild and when you do see them in the, in the wild uh, you'll probably hear them before you do see them Fantastic, absolutely lovely birds. I remember when I seen one in, a, in the wild, I must have been eight, ten years old. Uh, just lovely red, absolutely gorgeous birds. Uh, the problem with, with bullfinches is they don't last that long. They, you're looking at three years maximum. Um, because obviously they're, they're not long lived birds, so for you to get two good breeding seasons out of them, if you do, you, you're doing well. Anything above that is is brilliant. Um, it, that's the same with the Siberian bullfinches and the counterparts in obviously the mules and hybrids. Um, I'll show you. We've got a, a goldfinch bullfinch here. Lovely bird. I think it's two years old now. Wasn't bred by me. Um, stood an example. He's a northern cross. Never colour fed in this year due to the fact that there's been no shows and I I didn't want to colour and unnecessarily colouring because it's not good for them obviously the livers and stuff keep pumping certain products into them uh, but talking about obviously uh, breeding before we obviously show you the birds and a couple of uh, points on keeping them now breeding I've previously explained this it is this is literally just a branch a cocoa nest uh, bullfinches for me coconut nests are a must and like I said previously, put it into the fork of the tree and just tie wrap that in. It'll be in there. Tie wrap some green conifer around here. Doesn't have to be conifer. Christmas tree works perfectly. I wouldn't go so far as the pine because if the pine needles drop into the nest, when the pine needles drop off, they are actually quite tough. And obviously the, the shells on the edge, you don't want to smash them. Uh, but conifer for me, wrapped around there and I've mentioned this previously and it's most important make sure your birds have got um, an opening um, to actually fly into the nest easy access in not too much cover and perching points for you imagine the young are in there they've got nowhere to perch to feed the young and this is pointless you want a good perching point or even if you put um, a stick going across running across that way so when they have got chicks they can actually feed them because the, the chicks uh, stretch up um, when, they, when they're feeding the young ones they really stretch right to the top and obviously the birds sometimes actually have to almost tiptoe uh, to feed the, the young ones so that's how I do it whatever way you want to do it is perfectly fine but I, I suppose if you ask any breeder of um, either British bullfinches or Siberian bullfinches I'll almost guarantee you everyone would or would have used uh, a coconut one and it same goes for the nesting material this is our nesting material it's cocoa fibre 
literally everything that a bullfinch needs to build a nest. Green finch is the same. In fact, any bird will nest with this, but bullfinches will only use this. All finer twigs and roots, for instance, I've spent plenty of time picking old fine roots out for the bullfinches, only to find that they prefer bloody coconut fibre. Uh, obviously, back in the years where I used to forage a lot of my stuff when I was younger, um, most, like I said previously, anything that wasn't expensive to keep birds, I used to do. But obviously, fortunately now, we, we supply this ourselves, so using your own supply, why not? But that, that one there will see me through this season with one bag, I've got two pairs, and that's more than enough for two pairs. Now, um, the diet of the bullfinches is we sell a bullfinch mix. It's not, it's not anything special, but like I said previously, that you can use a good British finch mix for bullfinches. One thing I do add a lot of is fruit. Uh, this is an apple, which is ready for the bullfinches today. Once I've caught them up, for them in cages for you to see. Um, when I put them back in the flights, uh, where they've been housed at the moment, due to, I want them to be as fit as possible. Uh, same with the green finches, everything at one point is in the flights to get fit. Um, the, obviously, when I'm putting them back in, I want it to be a bit um, more encouraged, rather than a bit scared off. By adding a treat in there, is just, they, they'll return back to their, oh, something nice. That weren't so bad catching them up, if you know what I mean. But obviously this time of year, um, buds are starting to come out of the trees. Bullfinches love fresh buds. Uh, any any fruit tree, you'll get your, your cherry trees and your apples and all them type of stuff. They will devour the buds off them. Don't be pinching from someone else's garden. If Obviously if you see a few, just chop a, um, a couple of small branches off, put me a few bullfinches. Guaranteed almost instantly, they'll be eating them. Like I said, it, it goes across the line. Blackberries, strawberries, they will eat all of them. Uh, obviously, there's in uh, some orchards, apple orchards and fruit places, they, they are allowed to trap bullfinches because they are classed as a pest, but I, I think that's rubbish in my eyes. That it's just those bird keepers, that's their opinion. But obviously, the, the livelihood is more important than a bird, so that's a different story. Um, they don't get any any different treatment to to what many other birds get. The bullfinches are known for obviously the gates, air sac, mite, that type of breeding problems. But I, I tend to think that they get more of that in cage breeding than than in flies. Just my opinion. Uh, just over the years when I've had them in, obviously this cage is five foot long um, and I've had them in that compared to flights and they seem to, to be more prone to it in cages. I think it's maybe a lack of exercise, I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I'm just telling you what my opinion is. Um, one thing I will point out though, this year one pair of bullfinches, which is the, uh, the British pair, you'll see them shortly, lovely birds, I've shown them previously. But they'll be breeding in the fly, two foot by six foot, six foot high. Uh, they'll be breeding in there, a little bit of cover towards the back, one on the side, maybe. I, I'll see when I'm dressing the flights how I feel and see what the birds feel. The northern ones, for instance, will be bred in there. Um, this is just housing some green finches that we're sorting through at the moment. But um, this will get a deep clean again. I've been doing that bloody thing. <laughs> Transfer one bird to a cage, empty a cage, deep clean it out. This is one thing that drives me crazy about this time of year. So they'll be in here and I don't offer much cover for the, the northern parts due to the fact that they don't really need it. I find you can actually put in, um, this is one, this nest here with a perch on the front. Uh, I had the, the grass ones in last year or same with these ones. These are the ones I found that the northern bullfinches went in last year with no cover whatsoever. Like I said, when I had them in, in the cage, one, I had one at the back and this one on the front bars. 
And she went to nest in this one with absolutely no cover whatsoever, more freely than the, the one with cover. But it's like I've said previously, every bird is individual and the more time you spend in your shed, you will actually come to realise that about your birds. So, um, I'll leave that bit there for now and get back to you shortly. I'm just going to have a quick look at the bullfinches. Obviously, I've got to catch them up shortly. So, I don't, obviously, I'm trying not to stress them out. I don't like handling birds this time of year. Um, obviously, less stress the better for any bird. Last thing you want to do, you've gone through all the winter and you don't want to lose them now, especially bullfinches, your chaffinches. Spending too long trying to catch them up, uh, the amount of times that I've seen them die just from stress. You've, you've literally caught them because they're, they're not easy birds to catch and they, they die in your hand. I've had that in the past and it, it's, it's horrible just, just for the sake of just having a look at a bird. So here we have um, my pair of uh, British bullfinches, the cock on the left, lovely, lovely cock bird, but the, the end bird is absolutely stunning. Uh, the colour on this bird is, is exactly what I'm aiming for and this would be an ideal pairing. These are both current year bred birds, um, not bred by me, like I said, they are uh, fresh blood this year. Um, so big oats for these, like I said, they'll be breeding one of the flights. I've just literally caught them up just to show you, obviously, this, this pair. Um, I'll be looking to put the nest sites in um, next two weeks, just to let them settle in there, um, get familiarised with, obviously, the surroundings, so they're not too um, shocked when actually it is breeding time. So obviously, I'd look to breed these around April time. Um, I, I do have, obviously over the last few years when I have bred them, uh, being beginning of April, they start to get ready. Um, you will see uh, the cock birds probably more advanced than the end birds anyway. Um, they will start piping away as they do, um, dancing around piping. If I were to split these up now, I'm sure within no time the cock bird would start piping for the end bird. So just a, a quick look at them for you. Here you go. Lovely birds, bullfinches. So what I'm going to show you next is obviously the um, the northern pair, Siberian pair, um, and I'll compare them obviously to the sizes because there's a lot of obviously newcomers to my channel that might not know what um, a northern is or this or that and just give a, a bit of uh, insight to you guys so this is the the northern pair siberian pair um cut on the right hand side is uh, split for yellow the end brown pastel this is um, a lovely pairing nice big birds good feather quality on them they've never been in a show cage and they're not too happy about being caught up and same again, um, piping away, um, as you can hear the cockbird there, calling for his end. So that's them. Um, I don't tend to obviously want to breed um, many pairs of them. We can't obviously room all the birds I'd like to keep. Like I said previously, that we've, we've got yellow hammers and brambles and stuff. And, and to really concentrate, if I wanted to build a good line, you're going to need five or six pairs, obviously, whether it be Siberian or, or British pairs. So it's, this is just, obviously, for me, just to keep things interesting. Mark's obviously got um, a few different mutations, as you'll see in the video, which will come shortly. Um, and obviously, Dean Walton, obviously, he's got some, some fantastic birds as well. This is just a comparison of obviously uh, two end birds. Um, the right being the British one, the left being the northern. One thing you will find with obviously northern birds, they're a lot duller in colour than obviously our British and native counterparts. And one thing is obviously they're longer, bigger, but the tails tend to be longer on a, um, a northern or Siberian type, which can actually tell in, in your northern crosses. But one thing never to do, never cross an English with a Northern. It's just not right and it, it shouldn't be done. You don't want half chats 
regardless of what you're breeding them for, uh, they're just not nice. Just just key to save Northern, obviously, with British being on their own. Don't ever cross them, I just think it's wrong. We'll take a look now, we're obviously the two cock birds at side of each other, just to show you the difference with them. So these are the two cock birds, the British being on the left and Northern on the right. Total different kind of birds, like I said, difference in colour, size, everything about them totally different. I mean, if I had to keep um, one type, whether it be British or Northern, it would be hard to choose, just purely the fact that the Northern types do have so many different uh, mutations. I do love a good pied uh, bully. You hear the starlings talking. Starlings, by the way, have literally just started talking the last few days. Bloody nightmare, scared the crap out of me first time I heard them. Anyway, back to the bullies. Yeah, the, I, would, I would have to say it'd have to be British though, because there was um, one of my first loves when I started with birds. And I do remember one of the first times I went to Newark and seeing like the Northerns, the Yellows, were twelve hundred pounds for a pair. I just thought, who's going to bloody pay that for a pair of bullfinches? But people do, and obviously now a lot more people are breeding them. The price has come down on them. But I would say, for mutation side of things, definitely the Northern. But as a straight pairing, it's got to be the British pair all day long for me. I mean the 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 cockbird, the British cockbird, is looks a bit scared there, poor lad. But they've never been in a show cage, so they're acting kind of good. But bullfinches in themselves, in their own right, they're quite steady birds. And I know my father-in-law is looking to get a pair as soon as he's finished. Uh, obviously, he's building uh, a place for them. So done. Obviously, this is a video of obviously interest for you. The last from me to show you is um, a Northern Goldfinch Bullfinch, a lovely bird, like I said I haven't colour fed him, I started to, hoping that the shows would be on, but obviously they're not. Um, if I would have colour fed him, it would have been a different bird altogether. Um, when we show these, we show them in a, a British number three, um, it, it obviously a smaller bird, if it's um, a British no, um Goldie Bully, you can actually show them in a, a, a cage, a number two. But I still think they should be in a number three. Give them more space and let them show themselves a little better. Lovely cockbird, this one. Now this brings me on to uh, mules and hybrids. Um, Northern mules and hybrids, British mules and hybrids. Same as previously, the they don't last very long. If you get them to five years, you're doing something really, really well and the birds are comfortable. It's very rarely they'll last over three years. And obviously I've, I've been lucky to own a few, um, whether it be Northern Crosses or English Crosses, um, to achieve a, a bullfinch uh, hybrid on any level, whether it be greenfinch, bullfinch, red pole bully, all them are a, a, a big achievement in themselves. Now, you obviously, We'll have heard about obviously Ken Griggs um, with with the um, Siskin bully. Uh, there's still quite a few sceptical people out there, but I'm not going to go into that. What I am going to say though, in 2018, uh, I actually had um, Siskin cock current year bred, um, British bully hen current year bred. Um, they were in their flight cage together. Uh, she went down to nest. Didn't expect too much because it was uh, 8th of April, I think it was. I've actually got the pictures which I'll show you. Anyway, the, the eggs were full. There was two full eggs out of the clutch. And you, you just can't count your chickens until they hatch, as I say. Now, two days before they were due to hatch, just my stupidity, the, the siskin uh, chucked the eggs out of the nest. And she never went to nest again after that and that's obviously a missed opportunity on my part and something I've learnt from and one thing I will say is uh, one thing my dad always used to say to me if you want to breed um, bullfinch hybrids you can't have a bullfinch cock in the uh, whether it be in the flights or in that vicinity they can't hear you don't need to 
have them there so they're piping away to each other because that'll just stop the ends from bonding with obviously the, the cock birds that you're trying to breed with. And I, I don't know how true that is, but I, rem I do know that that previous, that year, 2018, I had obviously two, um, two end bullies to two siskin cocks. The obviously other pair never even, the eggs were clear every time. But obviously this, this pair, there was no bully cock in, in my shed whatsoever. And it, it did work like that. But obviously you'll see in a picture, And, and the picture, obviously, um, of the nest site, which is the nest site, actually, a bump of um, a branches with a fork when I put the Christmas tree around it, I wrapped it on just to make it more natural. Like I said, that was in a flat cage, uh, no big two foot by two foot. Like I said, they, they went to nest pretty easily. Said one one of the pairings clear eggs, the other pairings were full. But here's a picture, obviously, of the nest site with the the ones uh, with the siskin with the full eggs. Right, so that brings me on to obviously the next bit. Um, this is short bit from Mark, um, just explaining the way he does stuff. Evening, everybody. Um, just a quick little video, after speaking to Shane the other day, he um, phoned me up and was talking about things and basically was talking about different setups, about how we do things slightly different to Shane and we do things slightly different to everybody else. There's no wrong or right in the way we do things, it just all depends on the different setups. My setup's slightly different than everyone else's, Shane's are different than the next man and vice versa. Um, so basically, just a little video about that. After our phone call, we just wanted to put things like, we can show you the basics, but at the end of the day, it's your decision. They're your birds. You know your birds better than anybody. And, um, but uh, anyway, speaking of, speaking of Shane, we are going to do a little video about ball finches. Now, I'm no expert on ball finches, by any means of imagination, but um, I've had them a long time now, and I've seen the breed a lot of them. So I must be doing something a little bit right. So I just wanted to go through, as it's about ball finches, I wanted to go through and just give you an idea and show you the way that I would do things compared to Shane or the next man. Um, so the first thing I'd like to do is talk about is how I do things. Um, I always keep my birds in pairs. I went with them in pairs. I keep them together, I think they get a bond, and I just like, it's the way I do it, I like keep them in pairs, and they have a close bond, and then, and, and that's what I really like to do. You know, there are occasions where you might have to separate them up, but I've, I've never found that, personally. Not with Siberian bullfinches, anyway. And they're a lovely bird, I advise anyone starting their hobby, if they wanted to get a bullfinch, get a Siberian bullfinch. It's such a lovely, tame, easy bird to keep. Easy to breed, maintenance on very low. It's quite a, you know, stunning bird. As you can hear in the background now, always piping and active little bird. Um, but the first thing I I breed mine in flights. Uh, uh, three foot by six foot flights, nothing, nothing special. Half covered with solid roof, wires either side, and the feet nest at the front. Um, I like to use. Different, I used to start different, when I first started I used to screw an S pan to the back of the wall and I used to put a bit of fern up, but I'll change it now, so it's my mate Hayden, God bless him, he's good at that, he built me these cages, which I basically put a wicker nest pan, which we'll get from Shane, in there, this is a plain one, hasn't been cleaned or painted yet, I've had these two for years now, Hayden made me a load of them, and they're just brilliant. I try to put two in. They can be a bit fussy, ball things. You want to go for three. You often want to make their nest where they want to make it. So there's a bit of debate where about too much cover and not enough. I tend to put one at the back and one on the side because they often go back to nest before the chicks are fledged. So that's the reason I do it, and they can pick up the two. 
but I would like to cover mine with either artificial Christmas tree, but I tried this last year, it was okay, it worked fine, especially for my green finches, but personally, I like to put a burn, conifer, and just, I just stay for the arm or just fix it on the table ties, or screw it on whatever you like, and I just think the smell of it, but I don't try not to put too much. I don't want it too covered, I just put enough, just to give them a bit of confidence, so they can carry on feeding their chicks and and things like that. And these nest pans, are, these boxes that Hayden makes, they're just superb. I won't use nothing else now, it's fantastic. The other one that you can do, which a lot of people use as well, which is just a sounded chapel. Again, with a, a coconut fiber nest pan, you can take it out and have just got that. But for me, I don't really, I've not used these yet. So I'll, I'll stick to what I'm used to, because that's what they seem to settle in. So. But I know these are very popular. The um, second thing I'd like to come to is, is, is nesting material. Now, your normal birds will have your jute and cotton like this, especially your green finches and crossbills. I'll get this from Shane as well, by the way, thanks, Shane. Um, the poor finches, they, they won't have this at all. They like coconut fibre. So, this is what I use. Coconut fibre, you can get the brown and I like the colour. They like the colour is really good, but I guess I'm use the brown because then I get them green finches, other cross bills, etc. But they will only make their nest with coconut fibre. Some make a good nest, some make a very little nest, but that's what I use, which is a very important. Now the second field I go on to is a seed. I use a very basic seed. I've been getting it from balusters lately, which is just a boar finch stroke. So doing bullfinch mix really, so green finch mix, which is um, all my birds are kept outside all year in flights for all weather. I've never had no gaping or no ill birds or nothing. So I think they need a fairly heavy seed to be outside. So that's what I give them, you know, but any green finch mix with a bit of British finch mixed in, the addition of seed or whatever, it works fine. You know, so I've never had no problems being that. They need something, especially in our cold weather and our climate to um, keep their, sustain their fat and keep their weight up. So here's a few pictures from uh, Dean Walton and thanks Dean for, for getting involved and sending these pictures. It just shows people a few different varieties of mutations. Um, the pictures um, obviously will correspond whether it be cockbird or what mutation it will be of your wrote on there just for obviously for you to identify what's what. Um, like I said just have a look at them and just something different. So just before we go, I, what I just want to show you is this week, as I've explained earlier, it's been a really busy week in, in my shed and obviously in the flights. Um, not so much obviously getting obviously the, the five pairings um, paired up to, to what I want and some obviously some of the uh, hybrid and mule pairs. Um, but one thing, always, I always do weekly, two, uh, sometimes twice a week, Depending if I'm around, not in the office or or not out working, is I try to supply my birds with bird baths as often as possible. Like I said previously, it can be the coldest days outside, and you, just because it's cold doesn't mean say the birds won't want a bath. So if you put a bath on there, they'll be in there, whether it be minus one, two, three outside. And obviously, bathing does insulate the feathers. Um, what I have found, obviously, is it, really what bird I've not seen come and buy, buy bass from us. Obviously, just showing the different types. This type, uh, the plastic type, is brilliant. Um, the good thing about the plastic ones is 
so don't get water all over. Uh, if you've got electrics like I have down in this corner, where some of the cages are, I don't. I'd use this one uh, so the the water is just not flying all over the electrics. And that goes on a, a standard canary type cage front. But obviously, the bigger ones, which is more favourable to the bigger birds, uh, your Norwich and stuff. Norwich can be a bit funny about bathing in this type, um, just because it's a smaller one. But this this big wire one, you don't particularly need to to actually leave it on the front. With it having a door on, you could just place it there, catch the bird, and make it actually get a bath. But the fact that it's bigger, I would say this is eight inches. Um, wide so it's got plenty and the reason I do need these is the, the size obviously my cage fronts or the doors on my cage fronts are way too big for them ones you can see they'd fit inside it whereas these ones are not and I could use it on that, that style there perfectly um, we've got plenty available but one thing like I said it, it, it's one thing that I try and do as often as possible and you know one other thing I was doing this week is I, I smoke bomb the shed um, they, you can get plenty of them in fact let me see if you can uh, find it this is one that um, I've used and they smell smell brilliant it leaves a, a nice smelling um, shed Avery. All I did shut the doors, shut the windows. Put this. What I put it in was actually one of my uh, clay pots. Any terracotta type thing, anything that's solid, would work perfectly fine. I just light it, and it'll just start smoking. And don't worry, it's not going to kill your birds. This is 100% organic. So, um, just leave it for. A, well, I left mine two hours, and I came in and it was still quite smoky nothing wrong with that it doesn't harm you don't need to change your birds food your birds water it's totally fine leaving your birds in there and this is something i do probably three times a year not just it it does kill my it does do this and it does do that but the, the main reason i do it just cleanliness it just sort of cleans the air so yeah like i said i've, I've everything's now otting up towards breeding season there's a hell of a lot of jobs to do so I'm going to be busy for the next few weeks uh, whether it be pairing up um, sorting birds that's to go like I said the starlings uh, they, they are unfortunately going to have to go because they're taking up flights that I do need so if you are interested in them starlings uh, just give me a message um, visit us on Facebook send me a message they, there's four starlings, upcoming year bred nest mates. Uh, three have got rings on, one didn't, I couldn't get the ring on the other one. Like I said, the, there's one of them there starts talking, he even bloody sings Canary. I'm, I'm sure that if I were to play Goldie CD in here, he'd start singing Goldie. But anyway, there to go. Um, another thing is getting the birds into the, the cages or the flights uh, to what I'm breeding them in. Like I said, mainly green finches in the flights, the yellow hammers and chaffies and stuff. I've got so all through that, so it's a never ending thing for the next three or four weeks. So, dressing the flights, I will show you that. The egg food and explain the egg food. Um, what I do give them, what I'm going to show you is with the egg food is how I previously done it five or six years ago to how I do it now and I explain why. But that's to come. I'll try and get that midweek next week. Uh, just depends on time <coughs> but um, I'm just going to show you just a couple of pairs that I've got ready and um, explain them uh, Greenfinch, Chaffinch and the obviously Canary Crossbill in this um, well it's, it's more size of a, a treble breeder this is four foot long this cage um, we've got a Greenfinch Cock, Chaffinch Hen and as you can probably see in the corner what I've already done is basically get the nest site in ready one thing I found with chaffinches they can be a bit funny about um, new introductions it's like I said previously what I wanted to do was to get them comfortable with the surroundings so this is in and I won't touch that and 
I won't be offering any nesting material until I believe that these are ready. It's just a more of get them in that breeding condition just to spur them on that slight little bit. But there'll be more on that in the coming videos. So up here we have the crossbill canary pairing. Uh, I'll show you the um, the hen bird. No, the canary cock bird. Sorry. Uh, previously, uh, when I was trimming them up, the reason that they're in uh, a wire cage, purely the crossbill chews bloody everything. Same with these, not offering no nest material yet, just to get them uh, familiar with where they are and just get them ready because obviously crossbills go down faster uh, earlier than other British counterparts. That's it for today. Um, hope you have liked what you have seen. Um, like I said, comment uh, below, send us a message if you are interested in any of our products. And just leave a, a like and subscribe. Um, this just lets me know that obviously you are liking what we are doing and you are finding the information that we're giving um, useful to you. Like I've said previously, this is just how I do it. Mark does it differently. John down the road do it differently. You and you, we all do it different. And if we all did it the same, it'd be boring. So, like I said, Subscribe if you haven't already and just check out the, the other videos and what we are trying to do is, is Do a, a video midweek a short video just to Give you a, a little tip here and there and a feature video on a Friday evening uh, Uploaded seven o'clock so it gives you something to look forward to on a Friday So this weekend um, back to normal cleaning the birds out doing this doing that catching up on paperwork so have a good weekend and obviously you'll be just as busy as what I am and most importantly stay safe and just enjoy your birds. Um, thanks very much for watching and have a good one.